Coffee with the Editor is proudly brought to you by IRZ. Aubrey, Managing Director of Bombardier Transport South Africa. Correct. Ah, thank you so much for joining me for Coffee with the Editor. This afternoon, it's been a long time coming. How have you been? We're good. We're busy. Good. And uh, there are interesting opportunities, not only in South Africa, but the rest of the continent. Before we, you know, dive into what's happening in the rest of the continent, um, just break Bombardier down for me in terms of freight and passenger. We're very diverse, I mean, uh, in terms of our range of uh, uh, solutions uh, to our market. So we do provide uh, solutions for people, people mass transit uh, solutions, uh, like the how train, um, monorails, uh, trams, worldwide, mm -hmm. and um, uh, and the products uh, with new technology are becoming even more um, exciting. I think for commuters all over the world, and uh, we 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 are a leader in in, in mass transit solutions. Uh, freight business is uh, also. Uh, an important uh, market for us and so we built locomotives mostly electric locomotives and less diesel propulsion and I think it is also uh, to do with a focus on uh, emissions, uh, limiting emissions, uh, uh, limiting uh, carbon footprint so in South Africa we're building electric locomotives as you may be aware. We also do signaling uh, rail signaling. It's a traffic system in railways. It's important. If you move people off freight, um, signaling is actually very important. Um, and if you're going to increase your fleet, it's even more important. And so there are standards in various countries and we are offering signaling uh, solutions here, different parts of the world. And, uh, and we're excited to be able to have this sort of multifaceted uh, area and then of course after you've delivered the product to the customer you have to service it and it's a long relationship it's 20 30 year relationship and so we also provide world-class after-sales service solutions to customers remote diagnostic uh, solutions so that that's kind of your leading kind of advanced technology indeed you have to constantly embark on uh, research and development and the business uh, uh, does its very best to understand what works well, what people like, what customers like, and to improve on that. And, uh, and so that is the range of portfolio of products uh, that we have evolved over, over the years. But it's very much what the customer wants. So we are a listening company <laughs> and uh, it is important to listen, to ask questions, understand uh, where they're coming from. Um, why they are picking on particular solutions. Is it affordable? And, so aff and affordability is actually a big um, key factor in, in any transport solution. And uh, certainly in Africa where we're looking for funding and, and guarantees to be put in place, you know, what is the best kind of mobility, mass mobility, well, solution can that's you, affordable. <laughs> can you, you cannot uh, afford to be stuck in heavy traffic indefinitely and also increasing pollution, can we? You can't afford uh, to have trucks on gravel. So uh, I think that uh, yes, there's a calculation uh, that each country makes and to determine what are its needs. At the end of the day, it must actually suit the requirement 100% mm. to work and not just in the short term but over the life cycle of whatever solution it is you are providing. As a company, Bombardier, when you go into a country let's say Cameroon or uh, Zambia or, or wherever you, you, you know, putting down or exploring opportunities, do you actually go in and investigate what the most affordable and best solution you know, would be in order to propose that to the respective stakeholders? We, we engage with the key stakeholders and uh, it's government, ministries of uh, transport. Um, we also engage with um, 
with uh, domestic institutions that conduct research. I mean, we are actually very advanced in getting a high level scope of sub-regional market, you know, mm. and you look at many aspects. Their GDP is important. Mm. You look at uh, compliance to their own uh, uh, rules of proc procurement. You mm. look at the size of mega projects that have taken place uh, in the country. We look at, uh, uh, at population uh, migration to mm. cities. All of these factors that are actually influencing countries to prioritize. Do we, do we prioritize road? Do we prioritize freight? Mm. Do we prioritize uh, uh, mass transit for people, buses? And nothing is wrong. Mm. Um, you know, are you going to focus on, uh, uh, on, on your shipping industry? And it has a space. Mm. Uh, airports, uh, airspace has its own relevance uh, today and it will always uh, be the case. So you have to go and immerse yourself with the relevant uh, stakeholders. Yeah. And, and, and really the opportunity to exchange thoroughly helps everybody to be able to determine what is the best suit. And Bombardier kind of, and correct me if I'm wrong, you guys believe that whatever market you go into, you always put down further partnerships along the way. In Africa, what have your partnerships been like? Civil construction industry exists in many African countries and uh, that is also an example of uh, uh, typical partners with us. You know, we don't uh, uh, build uh, railway tracks, so you will need to have uh, partners uh, to come into uh, that space. We're not always insisting to be an operator so you would look who would, would be the uh, operator. And of course, you know, if you want localization, like in South Africa, you also have to engage with local companies, know who they are, who are their shareholders, what have they done, what can they do, and what's their appetite to partner uh, with us. And so it's never difficult. There are instances, and I think in the region, we will find there are instances where the priority is to transfer knowledge. Mm. And so your setup um, in, 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 in that instance would be different, but then we are in a position like we've done with the how train. Um, the requirement of the time uh, was uh, very differently written to the current one as it has evolved. Mm. But we took nearly 100 uh, South Africans to Derby in the UK to learn how to assemble the how train mm. and they acquired the skills came to South Africa and this is the train we use today and hopefully for another 30 years. Bombardia in Africa where are you guys presently and, and what projects are you working on? Bombardia has been in Africa for many years in many instances I think the name Bombardia gets associated with aviation you know our Learjets they don't fall. <laughs> and so that has been, an, I think, a long-standing uh, area of engagement, uh, aerospace, and you, and including South Africa, with South Africa, Uganda, with South African Express, mm -hmm. and you have seen on the way to Uganda, yes. the jet came via South Africa, and there was an opportunity for our colleague to share that uh, experience. Mm -hmm. In Ethiopia, we are involved in a project on signaling um, of the uh, rail corridor, um, we are doing the same in Tanzania, again with, uh, um, with, multi, with multinational civil construction uh, companies. So, so in Ethiopia, you've, you've also been doing level crossings in Ethiopia, haven't you? No, signaling. Just um, signaling? Uh, it's signaling okay. uh, uh, projects that we are involved in. And where there is level crossing, again, you, you will find that we have partners that we have engaged mm. or that we continue to yeah. collaborate in different parts uh, of the world mm. um, to bring them into that space. Ethiopia, you also mentioned which other African countries? Ethiopia, I mentioned uh, Tanzania. Yes, Tanzania, um, which, which are you working on in particular in Tanzania? They, they are the standard Tanzania gauge. Uh, standard gauge yeah. uh, corridors and the 
of course it's part of the East Africa uh, dynamics, but mm. Tanzania is seriously uh, with Yapi Merkensi. Right. Uh, so you're working we, on that project. We, we do have uh, a, a scope on mm -hmm. signaling, and uh, and we are excited about it because we think that uh, uh, Tanzania will definitely be seriously, uh, shortly looking for uh, locomotives, and we're building locomotives in South Africa. The Trax platform is very flexible, modular system, and. Uh, um, and we have got a supply chain in South Africa and that should make us competitive when Tanzania is uh, uh, looking at... Yes, because um, they're going to float uh, those tenders oh, shortly. Oh, indeed. Mm. And uh, power generation in Africa is also growing mm -hmm. exponentially with new technology. And, and that's good for us because I think electric propulsion mode, when you look at the total cost of ownership, it is another um, uh, exciting uh, option mm. for these customers and uh, in particular Tanzania is looking to electrify the line. Kenya, Kenya is uh, also looking at uh, um, uh, opening uh, cross-border transits uh, with its neighbors and uh, particularly for landlocked African countries like uh, Rwanda, there is serious regional cooperation uh, in that. The discussions have advanced when you look at the volume of spend that Africa and African governments and development agencies are committing in infrastructure development. So the time is now and we are committing resources. You can't just start going everywhere but we will most probably be very active in about 10-15 countries in Africa in the next two to three years. Having said all of that, contextualize for me, I mean you wrote a piece a couple of weeks ago on the African free trade, so there's obviously a direct drive between transport solutions and the African free trade. So this is a far-reaching uh, agreement and uh, it opens opportunities for the region to begin to trade with itself. And already, I think if you are in the uh, shipping industry, you know, ports upgrade and development is an option um, and an opportunity, I think, for the region, I mean, uh, to trade with itself. In the uh, Atlantic seaboard, Indian Ocean um, uh, board, so, so we do have roots in the sea. And, and then of course there are landlocked countries and Africa is a huge continent and I clearly believe that uh, rail, rail infrastructure is one of the most competitive uh, options that Africa is already investing in and they're investing in infrastructure whether it is standard gauge or whatever different gauge they are making the right investment and it means trains are coming which of your projects in Africa do you, that are ongoing, like already in implementation, that you want to highlight specifically? I mean, we're excited about uh, the recent contract with uh, Cairo for a monorail. And uh, it's exciting also because not so long ago, Brazil also contracted with us for a monorail. It's a concrete beam and you put something similar to the how drain on top of it. And it can actually follow nodal points instead of doing it differently. You're not moving people, it's very quick. So the total cost of uh, infrastructure is competitive. There is a space for it, particularly in highly dense uh, communities, mm -hmm. to look at uh, uh, monorails. I would like to see every airport in Africa having a uh, rapid transit like the how train but they can also uh, have monorails and it should be more of the same. To be able to go in and out uh, of this market will also go a long way to enhance the Africa trade. People have to go there, look at opportunities. You want to do it quickly, conveniently, and I think it opens up the space for, for monorail um, uh, products and or rapid transit uh, products to connect 
provinces mm. to connect states. Nigeria is a federal state and it has mega cities in Nigeria. They are about to put in a rolling stock manufacturing facility in terms of wagons. China is investing quite significantly in Nigeria. There must surely be an opportunity for Bombardier. There. Oh, there are opportunities and opportunities to cooperate, collaborate as well. We open to those discussions. Mm. Uh, who is best place to put uh, base infrastructure? Who is best place to put rolling stock? And who is best place to look at after sales service of these fleets. We also maintain competitions fleet where it is required. And then freight, of course, it is important. I think uh, uh, particularly for landlocked uh, countries, linkages to ports, it is important. Um, and we have got already a world-class product in Africa uh, that we believe will compete against the best. And it should be one of the most competitive uh, scenarios uh, for Africa to source within itself. Mm. Uh, again, it promotes the Africa trade uh, that you, we are talking about, making the cost of business lower to grow the Africa market. I just want to go back to the monorail, just for a second. What is the cost, and I'm not looking for an exact figure here, but is a monorail more cost efficient or more cost effective to build versus putting down the Kachau train, for example? You must understand what the Kachau train has done is uh, quite exceptional in the long term. They've oh, gone absolutely. underground. Yes. <laughs> you know, they've gone no, underground. And, and, and that is significant. That's what the customer required. Mm. And I think it will serve Kachau Deng for many, many years to come. Yeah. That corridor and the option to go underground in some of the areas. So my, my um, thinking is like Kenya, for example, you know, coming from the airport um, into town, you could sit on that little stretch for about four hours. Is it quicker? Is it more cost effective? In corridors of about 30 to 50 kilometers, mm -hmm. a monorail appears to be a most cost effective, very quick. Um, it impacts less on the environmental uh, aspect. You don't have to move. Uh, communities, you follow them, it is quiet and uh, it's maneuverable. Um, today, monorails do speeds of up to 120 kilometers, which is more than enough in uh, dense uh, uh, areas. That's what makes it attractive, not only in Africa, worldwide, yeah. that um, uh, it is a scenario that uh, is often uh, being looked at. And uh, when you look at propulsion, solutions, very soon you should be able to have this product run by battery with rapid charging capability. And so the solutions need to be affordable to that ecosystem. Mm. The, the, the government who often has to invest and or provide guarantees, um, you want it to be affordable to the commuter, you also want the nodal points to benefit on this nodal uh, connectivity. If you land at Kinshaka Airport and you can reach Moses Mabida uh, Stadium, watch soccer and be back in 10 minutes, you will do it more often. It will be a lot easier. You don't have to drive in heavy traffic. So it should be the same uh, for Kinshasa. <laughs> it should it should be the same in many states mm -hmm. in Nigeria, but you have to obviously engage with the respective countries mm -hmm. who have many priorities and not least South Africa. Energy issue, ESCOM, is a priority as, as, as we know and uh, education is a priority for government, uh, but multinationals are also coming to the party because if Africa becomes more efficient we should be feeding the world and it's a fantastic place, I think, on earth uh, to be able to crisscross. Rail is, is, is one of the areas that has to improve. Shipping, flying uh, should also improve. So the emphasis is more on multimodal form of transportation. Uh, mass transit solutions uh, are overdue for Africa. And, uh, and, and I think the technologies have improved in the last hundred years. So Africa doesn't have to choose 
hundred year old technology, they, they now are spoiled to go for the most advanced technology that is available. Products so, that are lighter, yes. that consume less energy, faster mm -hmm. um, and far safer uh, than, than other modes of, of transportation. What's got you excited in terms of transport and technology? What for you is like... Look, for me it's about people. <laughs> <laughs> um, people all want to live where it is convenient, mm -hmm. uh, where it's affordable, um, um, uh, where they can trade. So you, we have to come with solutions mm -hmm. that solve those problems and those challenges. And uh, if you have to do it only by car, you are limiting yourself. If you have to do it only by uh, airspace, mm. you are severely limiting yourself. And so I think that mobility um, is here to stay and uh, it is dynamic uh, in many respects. Mm. And Bombardier has been in the mobility space for nearly 100 years. And uh, we are continuing uh, to, to learn to understand ahead of time, mm -hmm. uh, to interact with key stakeholders all the time, mm -hmm. and to cooperate with those uh, economies to enhance uh, mobility for, for people. All right, so my next question, and it's a question I have to ask everybody because it's such like a relevant topic at the moment, uh, the Internet of Things, Fourth Industrial Revolution, and the role, where does Bombardier fit in all of that? We have to be there because um, Communities, even on the how train, they, they, they would like to be able to have uninterrupted uh, connectivity to their business activity. They want to have teleconferences uh, while in the train. You know, customers want to be able to access these markets. And so, yes, um, uh, it's inevitable. And from time to time, and, and it's changing all the time, technology that is, uh, meets the requirement um, uh, comes in and of course, you know, you have to understand what it does to the total cost of the uh, product that you have offered to the customer. It has to be maintained, it has to be updated. So those are the issues that we constantly have to understand what, what do you want, what do people want rather than dumping gadgets. I think you want to solve a problem. Mm -hmm. And if technology solves that problem or what communities or what the customer want, then it's a good technology <laughs> to go for. That, that's what we should be doing. Otherwise, um, um, if you simply just load in gadgets, you know, then you will disconnect, isn't it, with the market. But mm -hmm. you want to be connected. With the, with, with the customer, exactly what it is that they want to solve. If you want to have a toilet, it's not, you may think it's not technology, <laughs> but in a rapid transit uh, product, why, you know, um, do you want to do that? If you don't have it in a bus and you're stuck in a traffic, um, then you have very serious problems, isn't it? So, so there's a, a number of things that you constantly have to look at, understand and to listen exactly what the customer wants to solve and then you have to understand that look can you install that platform um, in a way that does not disrupt the safety of the product <laughs> and can you maintain it uh, consistently um, because you know you have to keep up uh, I think with those uh, standards you can't drop down on the standards. We've spoken about Africa um, we've spoken about some of the solutions and digital and technology. What are you guys doing here in South Africa? South Africa is definitely a solid base for Bombardier. Given the 30-year supply chain relationship that we have developed, so it allows us to engage with various engineering companies, consulting firms, banking institutions, um, all in one place. So it is an important uh, relationship. As we hunt for opportunities in the region, we now are able to work with African supply chain that is also very familiar with how we do business. And of course, 
um, the requirement to share uh, this uh, uh, range of skills and technology is also required wherever you do business. And it's competitive to be able to uh, localize what can be localized. Uh, it is a lot cheaper over a 30 year life cycle of a product. You want to get mechanics to be local and you don't have to fly them. So your ability to respond to challenges becomes more enhanced. So it is a good formula and South Africa um, is a definitely a, a solid platform. Uh, almost uh, the same period as South Africa's democracy that uh, Bombardier is in South Africa. It's a lovely coincidence for us. But we're here to stay and there are still opportunities in South Africa and there's opportunities to export into the region from South Africa and to be able to share experiences uh, to opportunities in the region, not in Europe or in Americas, but to do it in, in South Africa. And of course, what is happening in Egypt, it is important you know, to us and uh, to the market. And there are many uh, customers uh, wanting to, to, to learn from their experiences. Have you broken ground yet in Cairo? We have started, and the start has all its faces and, uh, and its time frames. I think it will be good for, for us in South Africa uh, as Bombardier to provide a platform, uh, hopefully, to share experiences for our project managers who are involved with that project execution. Uh, the details, uh, of course, we can arrange. Uh, it is early days, but uh, the project is starting. It is a good case study for Africa to look at uh, and to, to match uh, its affordability and to compare as well. So, so there will be opportunities, I have no doubt, for us to share more light about the project uh, as it unfolds. I'm looking forward to that. I'm looking forward to visiting it when it's, you know, maybe halfway complete or you're doing all your tests. That would be awesome. <laughs> uh, and, and there are opportunities in, uh, in, in Morocco. Uh, Bombardier has been there again for many years and uh, there are trams um, uh, and uh, there are opportunities to do trams and of course trams as you can imagine it's right on the ground. Um, there are environments where the level of planning is so advanced it makes a tram uh, an attractive uh, option and scenario to look at. Um, I think in Soweto I wouldn't put a tram uh, uh, as an example, but a raised uh, a monorail uh, can crisscross uh, many areas. And of course, the, the metro, uh, you know, South Africa is in the process of renewing its metro, and, and, and that is important as well. Mm -hmm. And that also keeps the supply chain um, alive. Um, uh, that is important as we bid for opportunities in the years to come. So what big announcements are we going to be expecting? From Bombardier the move into Africa um, is, is definitely something that we are working very hard on. There will be big announcements about Bombardier's growing footprint and uh, offering customers convenient modes of transport. The how train um, convenience will expand in many corridors in Africa. It's a long journey, uh, but we are excited that uh, Bombardier um, is focusing uh, on, 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 on this market in the continent. And, and for us, that's big. It is big for rail industry. It's big for education sector. Uh, you need signaling engineers. You need uh, you need electrical engineers, you know, the spin-offs that you get in the industry are what I think Africa is talking about. And uh, if you are going to increase the Africa trade, uh, you know, this is exactly what, uh, what we are about.